Today's movie is a real nightmare, and I'm not sure I mean that in a good way. Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're tackling Harley Coakless's weird nightmare movie, Dream Demon. Released in 1988, Dream Demon is one weird little film. While the title would lead you to expect another Nightmare on Elm Street ripoff, the actual film feels a lot more closely related to Bernard Rose's 1988 dark fantasy film Paper House. They're not super similar, but they definitely share a vibe. But enough about that. Can Dream Demon kill enough sleepers to earn a coveted 5 part bag rating? Let's get to the gore and find out. Today's movie may be about bad dreams, but if you check out the sponsor of this video, you'll get a great night's sleep. Thanks to Helix for sponsoring today's video. You know how important sleep is to me, and I couldn't be happier to once again team up with Helix, a brand that's all about delivering premium, customized mattresses right to your door. But that's not all they do, because they've just launched their newest, most high-end collection, the Helix Elite. And I can't wait to tell you about it. So get comfy, because we're about to dive into a world of better sleep. Let's kick things off with a look at the star of the show. A Helix Mattress. When you receive your Helix, it comes neatly packaged in a box, and the unboxing process is a breeze. Trust me, you'll be as excited as I was when you see it all unfold. But before I get into more details about that, let's talk about the Helix Sleep Quiz. This is where the magic happens. Helix knows that every sleeper is unique, and they've designed a quiz that matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress. It's like having a personalized sleep consultant right in your home. I've had my Helix mattress for the better part of a year, and let me tell you, it has been a game changer for my sleep quality. I'm a back sleeper who prefers a firm mattress, and I'm here to tell you I couldn't be happier with the Helix Twilight Lux they matched me with. One thing that really sets Helix apart is their commitment to your health. Unlike some other brands, Helix mattresses are fiberglass free. This means you can sleep easy knowing you're not exposed to any harmful materials. And when it comes to convenience, Helix has you covered. Your mattress is delivered right to your doorstep, and it's incredibly easy to set up. Plus, they offer a 100-night sleep trial, so you have more than three months to make sure it's the perfect fit for you. <laughs> and the icing on the cake? Helix mattresses come with a 10-year warranty, giving you peace of mind for the long haul. Alright, now let's talk about the Helix Elite Collection, because I'm pretty excited about it. This year, Helix stepped up their game and introduced their most high-end collection yet. The Helix Elite mattresses combine luxury with personalized comfort. With six different models to choose from, you're guaranteed to find the perfect fit for your unique preferences. And if you're looking to take your sleep experience to the next level, consider upgrading to the Glaciotex cooling cover. And it's perfect for staying cool and comfortable, especially during those hot summer nights. We got one of these for my mattress, and believe me, it's been a game changer. And here's the exciting part. Helix has some special offers this October. They've got secret flash sales happening throughout the month, so it's the perfect time to upgrade your sleep setup. Keep an eye on their website for these fantastic deals. I can't stress enough how much I love my Helix mattress, and I genuinely believe you will too. If you've been looking to upgrade your mattress, this is the perfect time to do it. For the month of October, Helix is offering my followers an exclusive discount. 25% off your purchase, plus two free pillows. To take advantage of these savings, go to helixsleep.com forward slash horror geek, and you'll receive a unique promo code for 25% off. It expires October 31st, so be sure to use it before the end of the month. You'll find a link to the 25% discount offer both in the pinned comment and description below, or by using the handy QR code here on the screen. And remember, Helix will have secret flash sales throughout October, so keep an eye out for those. Thanks again to Helix for sponsoring today's video. Your sleep quality is crucial, and Helix is here to make sure you get the best rest possible. Sweet dreams, everyone. And now, let's get bloody. We fade into some credits and a wildly generic title card. Yes, they sleepwalk through design in this thing, starring Kathleen Wilhoyt. That name may not be super familiar, but she's been in stuff like Fire in the Sky and Roadhouse. But you probably really remember her as weird psychic Zarabeth from our Witchboard video. Introducing Gemma Redgrave. She's the daughter of actor Corin Redgrave and the niece of Vanessa Redgrave. Which makes me wonder, why did they let her star in this for her first major role? Alright, whole lot of people I don't know. And right into the ending of 2001. Man, this chick is pulling quite the train. Hell yeah. No, no, not like that, you pervs. The train of this wedding dress. I know Taylor Swift likes to put on a show, but this seems a bit much. Wait, now she kind of looks like Leah Thompson. Not even two minutes in, and this movie is already confusing me. And directed by Harley Coakless. Harley ended up working primarily in television, but he did direct Black Moon Rising. That wasn't a horror movie, but an odd crime film with Tommy Lee Jones, Linda Hamilton, and Robert Vaughn. 
church establishing shot. And now it's time for the nuptials. <laughs> Look at this dude. He's like, I married Mrs. Wright. <laughs> I just didn't realize her first name was always. Wait, not so fast. I'm sorry, Oliver. I can't marry you. Guess despite Billy Idol's proclamations, it actually wasn't a nice day for a white wedding. <laughs> Naturally, Oliver isn't taking this well, so he gives her one hell of a wedding day pimp hand. And then she goes full bridezilla. You bastard. No, no, we're gonna need Linda Day George to show her how it's done. Bastard! Bastard! And holy shit, she pimp hands his head clean off. Can't show you that, but I'd say her wedding dress is ruined. Just as an aside here, I'd like to once again reiterate how much I hate this bullshit platform and its ridiculously prudish attitude towards obvious special effects. This was a good gore gag that they'll demonetize me over if I show it. Wait, is it too late to make a red wedding joke? Except this is all just football practice. Guess and we're gonna have a lot of that in a movie called Dream Demon. And another church establishing shot. Give me five our fathers. With that out of the way, we head inside for a little pew pew. You know, because of the benches. Looks like they're about to consummate the marriage early, but Father C Block comes in to save the day. Leave room in there for Jesus, you two. Apparently, Kathleen here was late to the first day of shooting. Sorry, my flight was delayed. Hope you didn't start without me. Hey, it's budget Phil Collins checking her in. And Gemma's back home. She's got some mail. Bill, Bill, jackpot. Publisher's Clearinghouse says I won. She heads to her place to chill, but too bad for her, the AC is out. Damn. Hoping to solve this dilemma, she heads downstairs where she finds her crackhead Barbie. Oh yeah, looking great. This is your Barbie on drugs. Great, cable's out again. Now how will I watch Mr. Bean? Meanwhile, apparently walking through the hotel lobby has worn Jenny out. Oh god, Gemma's sleeping with her meth head Barbie. I think probably has lice. It also has boobs, so we probably better blur those out. Prudetube hates boobs even more than gore. Oh yeah, told you she had bugs. Man, this place is just crawling with bugs. We should probably hire an exterminator. Oh shit, she just wandered into Freddy land. Step into the light, Carolan. Filmed with over the shoulder cam. Oh, hey, remember that dream where you show up for class naked? Well, just swap class for your wedding. And another giant pimp hand. I'll say this, Mark Greenstreet is selling those pimp hands. Dude definitely works stiff. Give me a hell yeah! But of course, this is just another dream and she's late for football practice again. Not <laughs> great, they broke the creepy Barbie. It's like seven years bad luck. And now she's got a phone call. No, I don't want to talk about the upcoming election. I thought you were trying to sell me a car warranty. House establishing shot. It was nice of Joan Jett to stop by to plan the bachelorette party, though. Meanwhile, Diane is on her way home, where she's accosted by these guys. Look, we've really been trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty, but since you never answer, we decided to drop in. But she's not receptive to that pitch, much to this dude's chagrin. Stuck on cow. What's going to happen to Not me, unfortunately. Okay, sure. Guess these two are the main characters now. And now they're back to harass her some more. Guess that she knows exactly how Princess Diana felt. Then we get this whole litany of slang for male genitalia. It's wanger, it's dong, it's schlong, it's plonka, it's mutton cutlass, it's pork sword, it's beef bane Can't believe they missed beef baton. They're not giving up. At least not until I can't believe it's not Susie Sue on Casual Friday shows up. The kick is up, and it's good. And now that she saved her, she's gonna assert the old English right that says she now gets to crash in your flat. We're headed to gender-swapped odd couple territory. Oh yeah, I love what you've done with the place. Classic early crazy cat lady. Hey, you don't own a single one of my records. Make yourself at home. Oh yeah, she's way ahead of you. She's about to go try on your wedding dress. Um, did she put a plant in the fireplace? That's not how those work. Then, in a moment of hilarity, they realize they're both engaged to the same guy. No, not really. And Diana has questions. Where are you from? Oh, LA. I was doing some psychic stuff there, but shit got heavy. Needed a change of scenery. Gonna be a lot of witchboard references today, I think. Turns out she thinks she's actually from Diana's place. Which is a pretty bold move to try to get her to let you crash there. Well, I thought coming here I could pick up on some vibes, you know? Just anything a, a kid would remember. Then they settle down for some lunch. PBJ and wine. Lunch of champions. I even cut them diagonal the way you like them. Meanwhile, Jenny is experiencing some past life shit. It's like that time belonged to a, a different person. 
Holy shit, she's Zarabath reincarnated. I knew it. God, I thought she'd never leave. Then she gets a phone call. Hi, Diana. It's Jenny again. I think I left my purse at your place. Mind if I swing by and pick it up? House establishing shot. And the cameraman's clearly a creepy peeper. <laughs> oh shit, looks like Jenny just let herself back in. And just like that, she locks her out of the place. Sorry, Diana. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. It's my house now. Oh, hi there. I've heard a kiss in the ring, but this is gross. I mean, this is not the kind of lip ring kids today love. Anyway, she flees and winds up covered in goo. Hell yeah. No, not like that. This slime on the wall. Wait, was that creepy photographer down here earlier? Forget it. I don't even want to know. Then she runs into whatever the hell this is. Carol Ann apparently got stuck in the basement in her Christmas play outfit. And say what you will, but this is a real cliffhanger. Peck's not going to save her, though. He's just going to snap some photos for the gram. I like that he's going handheld here. He used to have a tripod, but one leg broke and he couldn't stand it anymore. Uh, hey, I guess at least the Burning Man made it out of Burning Man this year. He sends Peck plummeting to his doom, and Diana climbs out. This has been a real rocky turn of events. Except there's a jump scare as Peck drops in. <laughs> Must have one of those weird portal guns or something. But it's all just more football practice. So it was all a dream, except for the part about Jenny squatting at her place. Oh yeah, definitely looking like a tampon commercial here. You should try Tampax. It has a plastic tip applicator and is extra absorbent. With that resolved, the girls are going down. Hell yeah. No, not like that. Down the stairs, to the basement. It's dark down here, so they're gonna need some illumination. Hey, that isn't a flashlight, it's a flashlight. Yes, that explains the goo on the wall. There's not much down here, but they do manage to find a jump scare. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Turns out he's got some troubling exposition to report. Peck's actually missing. He hasn't been seen since yesterday. Anyway, now Diana's convinced her dreams are real. Oliver's like, honey, are you high? Because you sound super high. Well, he kind of looks like Amazon Basics David Bowie. Jenny's like, um, I'm going to give you guys some privacy. I'll be squatting in Diana's room if you need me. Meanwhile, Ollie's like, who the hell are you again? He bails, but Jenny's like, you think you'll sing Let's Dance at your reception? Because that would rock. Oh, and she's decided she's going to keep squatting here for a while. Well, somebody's got to stay with you. House establishing shot. <laughs> oh shit, I think the T-Rex is here. This is what happens when you buy a flipper house. All the cosmetic shit just falls apart. I mean, you could say she's cracking under the pressure of these dreams. Yeah, would you look at that? You're giving the house nightmares now. You're both cracking up. Hey, hey, leave the jokes to me, Jenny. And time for more exposition. Diana is a virgin. Uh, wait, let me get this straight. You have never done it before, ever? After a bunch of jibber-jabber, Jenny heads off to make her a sandwich. God, how am I ever going to get her out of my apartment? I don't even know her. Hey, Diana, I forgot my toothbrush. I'm going to use yours. Hope that's cool. Um, hey, maybe close the door and turn on the exhaust fan before taking the Browns to the Super Bowl, Diana. Oh, hey, she just found a girl getting a pearl necklace. Hell yeah. No, an actual pearl necklace. And then British Ted Raimi shows up. And he does not look happy. But then he morphs into Zombie Peck. Look, I have no idea what's going on here. Wait a minute, is Jenny having the dreams too? He attacks her, but she's like, man, I just want to bend your ear for a while. <laughs> she definitely got an earful. Then she van goes out of there. Now, oh, hold on. Is she stuck in Diana's dream? Wait, ah, Diana! Next day, she's basically cosplaying a character from the Sandman comics. They head back to investigate the basement and see what develops. You know, because they have a Polaroid. Do you kids even remember Polaroid instant cameras? Christ, I'm old. Great, they just stumbled into Narnia. Oh yeah, definitely Narnia. They even print the magazines backwards. And Burning Man is back. And I sure hope that makes sense someday. Oh yeah, Best Gore will pay me a fortune for this photo. Mm, I guess the upside of this whole thing is she finally got Jenny out of her apartment. But she's not leaving without offering some observations about events. You were having weird dreams before I showed up. It's the house. So Diana's not giving up though. I'm gonna crash here in your hotel room until you agree to help me. She heads off to take a nap, and then our reporter shows up. <laughs> yeah, I forgot he was still in this movie too. But he comes bearing gifts of exposition about Oliver. I've been doing some checking up on him, and he's in deep, deep financial shit. Man, I knew investing in that porta potty business was a bad idea. <laughs> oh yeah, edibles have definitely kicked in. 
Well, this is unacceptable. I'm going to speak to a manager. Wow, I had no idea this hotel had a subterranean supervillain's lair. Sweet. She gets back in the elevator, but she's acquired a passenger on her way up. Um, why does the reporter guy look like the love child of Alexander Ovechkin and Ted Cruz? Bet she's gonna run into Kirsty and the Cenobites out here. Oh, hold up. Did she just wander into people under the stairs? Because I wish I could wander into that movie right now. Eventually, she finds Peck, who's enjoying this nice dinner. <laughs> Looks like he's eating Play-Doh. Oh man, his eczema is out of control today. We're gonna need a case of Dupixent. But Diana isn't going down without a fight, and she punches right through his head. Back in reality, Diana is awake. I had the weirdest dream. There was a Joan Jett wannabe squatting at my place. You're still here. With her sleeping causing a lot of problems, she resorts to the Nancy Thompson Elm Street solution. Jenny, if I'm really awake, then don't let me go to sleep again. Not until we've worked this out. Promise me. It occurs to me this movie has a lot of shots of people walking up and down stairs. Cameraman's like, wait, it's hard enough to navigate steps while looking through a viewfinder. It also occurs to me the title promised a dream demon, and we really haven't had one. I mean, I'm not counting Peck. And of course they get separated. Oh, hey, remember the weird girl and her dad? They're still in this movie too. Look, this movie is really kind of a mess right now. Feels like Dollar General Inception. Then she has to rescue the girl from these flames. And a lot of burning questions about what is going on right now. And say what you will, but this is pretty offensive. You know, because there's a hole in it. Um, is she getting Annabelle chonked by ghosts or something? Judging by the rate they're moving, this chick is heavy. God, Carol Ann, maybe lay off the angel food cake. Aw, oh, just chill, it's gonna be fine. I hate it when my kids get freezer burn. Guessing she's calling the Butterball Turkey Line for defrosting tips. Turns out, this is actually just her fiance. Try and find Dr. Groom, but most of all, come, come quick. Yeah, no worries there, he's in bed with another chick, which we really can't show because boobs. Jesus, her dermatitis is really out of control. I need to pick an Ann Sky Rizzy for this shit. Diana, meanwhile, is thinking some deep thoughts. Why do they call them fire trucks if they're full of water? Anyway, that's interrupted by this tree, which is really branching out. Hey, babe, want to suck face? This might be the hardest movie to synopsize that I've ever done. Random shit just happens constantly. And football practice. But at least Ollie's here to say what we're all thinking. This is insane. All right, settle down. You're already delusional, so this shot of trend won't hurt. Eventually, she winds up in some facility. Looks like they're trying to hotwire her brain. Oh, hey, Jenny's still stuck in dreamland. Maybe she can find some apartments there to squat in, too. The next morning, Diana's awake. I had the worst dream that I was in a Harley Coakless movie. Wait, damn it. Jesus, did someone just replace Dream Demon with some Claudio Fagasso footage? I've seen less haze than this at a Cypress Hill show in LA. Meanwhile, the producers are watching the dailies. We should pull the plug on this project, right? <laughs> yeah, there's the weird girl. These are definitely dailies. And if you guessed the blonde girl was actually Jenny, give yourself a screenwriter's credit. It's Jenny. You've just been shyamalan Which leads to a house establishing shot. Man, this place seems so empty without Jenny squatting here, hogging my couch, eating all my food. But it turns out Jenny's just squatting in an alternate reality version of her apartment. Oh god, she's gonna recreate the ending of Prince of Darkness. Don't do it, Diana! Oh, it's like one of those police interrogation rooms. Definitely a bad time for the next batch of edibles to kick in, too. I guess it's good a movie called Dream Demon is so fantastic at curing my insomnia. Man, someone has been hitting the old peace pipe pretty hard in there. <laughs> but they're still trapped in dreamland. I suspect this is what a bad trip is like. The bad news is they're trapped in this place. The good news is they found their dream dates. I got good news and bad news, girls. The good news is your dates are here. What's the bad news? They're dead. Oh yeah, this shot is pretty great. And separated again. These two never learn. But hey, at least we're about to see how this dude turned into the Burning Man. I'll take any victory I can get at this point. Oh yeah, sweet Human Torch cosplay, dude! And here comes Diana to save the day again. They flee, which means it's time for yet another church establishing shot. And we might as well get another deep thought in too. Which came first, orange the color or orange the fruit? And I guess the wedding is off. Great, final scene in a graveyard. Well, wait we'll to go looking for the plot now. And this is how Joan Jett recruited Diana to be the first member of the Blackhearts. Hey, I know a great place we can go squat at. See, told you. 
And one last house establishing shot. But I feel a swerve ending coming. Wait for it. Yeah, there it is. Hey, what happened to Peck and the reporter? So, what have we learned from Dream Demon? Hell if I know. I have no idea what the point of this movie was. This one's a weird one. It's competently shot and decently acted, but the script is a real detriment. There's no real Dream Demon to speak of, which seems like a pretty glaring omission in a movie literally called Dream Demon. Even if we count Peck as a Dream Demon, he doesn't really do anything, they don't really beat him in the end, and he's sort of superfluous. But enough about that. Can Dream Demon nap its way to a five barf bag rating? Let's go to the gore card. In terms of gross anatomy, this one is underwhelming. We're treated to a lopped off head, the burning man, Peck's gooey makeup, one ripped off ear, and that's about it. What gore is here is solid, but there's not nearly enough of it to justify anything more than a paltry two bag rating. And that's me being very generous. I mean, that opening decapitation is pretty solid, and that's worth a bag alone. But this one is not a sick flick. Looking for a better movie about nightmares? Then be sure to check out my review of Bad Dreams. You'll find a link here on the screen. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters.